Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my parents' house studio. It is your man in the United States, Jay Contra. And another unconventional unboxing, not only because these are all boxes that I took with me in my checked baggage when I came from Japan to America, but we are also joined by my dog, Yadi. He will be supervising this video, but let's get into it. So these should all be boxes, I think, of my collection that I'm trying to downscale what I have in Japan. I mean, just some random CD for some reason. <laughs> so putting that aside, well, what else have we got in here? Oh yeah, okay. I'm trying to yeah, I'm trying to move all the games that I've actually well most I've played most of these I think. So let's see what do we get. Gunak, much cheaper in the Japanese. I think it's about thirty dollars. Even in Tokyo, we've got F Zero for the Super Famicom, fantastic racing game. I actually did. I think I actually was able to clear all those courses. Now we've got Gal's Fighters which for some reason, I think it jumped from like a $20 to $100 Neo Geo Pocket. I mean, a lot of the Neo Geo Pocket games are getting really expensive these days. And another shame game. I did play this in English, but I want to play it in Japanese. Final Fantasy Tactics, $5, so why not? What else did we get in here? Oh, this is a very interesting, uh, something you should keep in mind, is the PSP. This is my Dissidia uh 012, the City of 12, Duo, Duo Decim, <laughs> Special Edition PSP. The special thing that you should know about PSPs in general is that, for one, their batteries tend to end up exploding over time. So what I did was they always ask you to remove all the lithium batteries. Basically, they don't want any batteries in the checked bags because that could cause lots of problems on the airplane. You should also remove your battery from your PSP anyways just because they will explode at some point. Well, not explode, but definitely expand and cause problems for you. Oh yeah, I picked up Monster Hunter World a couple months ago. I've played it for a couple hours. It's it, it's fine. Honestly, I, I controversial, opinion, controversial opinion, but I don't think I like Monster Hunter that much. Caladrius, fantastic shooter for the Xbox 360. Highly recommend it. What else have we got in here? Oh, and a couple more PSP games that I didn't take back with me, or didn't, that I didn't ship to myself. We've got Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep Final Mix, and we've also got Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker, because I want to play the original PSP version for some reason. Oh, and then, yeah, here's the black and red, my favorite color combination, DS. I think this is the light, yes? Special DS, the, what's special about the DS light, if you don't remember? Oh, God, even though, I mean, has it been 10 years now? These these babies can play Game Boy Advance games. And I think, yeah, I think I'm getting rid of a lot of my... Well, not getting rid of, but removing a lot of my PC Engine items simply because I don't have the time to play them, and so I'm getting rid of my consoles, or at least removing them to America. All the Dick, and then the Arcade Card Duo, which is still a surprising, surprisingly affordable. I think I've seen these brand new go for about $60. What else have we got in here? Oh yeah, the Rocketeer for the for the Super Famicom. For some reason, my dad really likes the Rocketeer. And we got oh yeah, the Castlevania games have really shot up in price. Actually, most of my Castlevania games are in this box. We've got Symphony of the Night. This should be about a forty dollar game. Then we've got oh yeah, Avenger for the PC Engine CD. This is a really cool shooter. Oh, and then we got what was it? Q Q Tiger. I can't remember, but Tiger was oh fantastic. Yeah, another fantastic shooter for the PC Engine. Oh, and then a couple of other CDs that might be relevant. Uh, we got the Black Mages CDs. Really love the uh, the sort of, I guess you could say, heavy metal rock versions <laughs> of a lot of classic Final Fantasy songs. And I, another CD, My Bloody Valentine. <laughs> so, <laughs> not game-related, but interesting to me nonetheless. What have we got in here? Oh, yeah, uh, Chip and Dale Rescue Rangers 2. Fantastic, super, fantastic regular Famicom game that's also very cheap if you're buying the Japanese version. And then Crisis Force went up to, I think, like $50, $60 just for the cartridge. A great shooter. Actually, one of the few shooters that I've actually cleared without cheating. <laughs> and then Ninja Gaiden, which is actually, while it is very, very hard, I actually thought it was very fun when I played it a couple months ago. This is, a, I thought, a really good game that even 30 years later still holds up. Then we come to, oh yes, these I should hold on personally because these are very valuable, but I feel safe having them here. We've got Order of Ecclesia. This is easily $100, $120 game now. We've got uh, Portrait of Ruin, or was it Gallery of Labyrinth in the Japanese? Fantastic Castlevania game, probably my favorite Castlevania game for the DS. And then we've got 
uh, dual, oh, it's Castlevania DS. What, did the, what was the thing they did with it? Du dual something. I can't remember what they did. <laughs> I can't remember what they, what they did with the English, but another great, but expensive game. Although I think it's only 60, 70 bucks. And then Contra Dual Spirits, which for some reason is like, 90 to 100 dollars now like ds games are getting out of control and especially those old konami games hey yadi how you doing oh he's gotten off the bed now okay and then my copy of super contra I'm trying to get my get my shadow out of this super contra is still about a 40 or a 50 dollar game my only problem with this is that someone matsuoka wrote their name on the back of here but you know what i'm not going to spend another 50 dollars on this game we got oh yeah and then here's oh yeah 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 um this is the PSP remake of Symphony of the Night and it also has I think a complete sort of ROM of Rondo of Blood on it as well I haven't I, I still got yeah I got to break out my the PSP and actually get around to playing that because I was playing the originals then we've got Castlevania three this complete in box is. I mean, it's getting to be $100, $110 now. All the Castlevania games, despite a general freeze in Famicom prices, have really gone up in value still. We've got original Contra. And I think that's it for this box. So let's move on. Put that box aside. Let's see what's up in here. Maybe I have some more music CDs that I can share with you. Hold on, I'm just got to orient. I'm doing this. I'm going to get my... Uh, don't have a mount for this. So I'm doing this all one-handed. <laughs> What do we got in here? Oh, there's Mega Drive controller. I think I had like a whole box just full of controllers. For no particular reason. Move these plastic bags to the side. Oh yeah, I like to wrap the controllers in plastic just in case things shuffle up against each other. That way they don't leave any scratches. This is the Justco N64 controller, which I ended up finding a, a complete. Is that in here? Oh yeah, okay. Actually, it's all in here. We'll get to the we'll get to the N64 in a moment here. Just a Wii U because I'm sending my Wii U back to America. And that Pro Controller. So what is very special about this? And I can maybe talk about the weirdness of Japan in terms of pricing. That in here we've got a complete, well at least loose, a complete loose <laughs> Jusco N64. Note the sort of clear bottom and then the clear gray top. The thing about the Jusco N64 is that it doesn't seem to really be that much of a known quantity in Japan, or at least at a lot of different stores. So while a Jusco N64 can easily go for $100, $200, it, honestly, I don't think it's the rarest variant. I think that honor goes to the completely clear gray N64 that was bundled with the 64DD. But I've seen high eBay prices for the Jusco N64, to be honest. I don't think it's worth a high price simply because you can go to a lot of video game stores in Japan where they don't really they, they don't really price it any di differently from other N64 so you can probably still find it for 30 40 dollars if, if you if you look around I've not actually seen it at like a mandarake so I don't know what it's what it's you know city value is and we've also got so yeah I'm sending back my N64 because to be honest since since completing my collection of the N64, I have come to realize that I actually hate the N64. <laughs> but that's a subject for another video. So let's move that box to the side. What have we got here? Let's open this up. What did I send back to myself? Oh, I sent back my Lando Calrissian. <laughs> I sent back some Star Wars action figures. <laughs> what I like to also do at Hard Offs is they tend to have these old Power of the Force <laughs> Star Wars action figures that I have loose, but I thought it'd be cool to have some of my favorites complete in box because I'm still, you know, probably, what, 10 years old at heart, I guess? Yeah, I get the Princess Leia. There we go. Let's move that aside. Not appropriate for YouTube. Oh, yeah, and then here's my uh, 2B square action figure. It actually really held up. I'm really glad that I packed these properly. I like to not only pack insulation or, you know, pack packaging protection into both the box itself, but into the checked bag. And then, oh yeah, okay, I can talk about these. Here's Perfect Dark. Here's probably the my favorite N64 game slash the most valuable, because Sin and Punishment can be about $60, $70 if you find it complete. Fantastic Shooter, if you haven't played it already. What else have we got? We've also got Perfect Dark. This is this is the best box that has ever been created for any video game ever. I love the red and the black contrast. 
I just love the unique art that was only found on the Japanese version. So put that to the side. Although perfect art for a hot minute, it was very expensive, but it's actually really gone down in price for some reason. As have a lot of N64 games, despite it really being in vogue in America, from what I've heard. We've got Resident Evil 2. This is probably the third most expensive N64 game. Can easily go, if it was in mint, which is this, this is obviously very not mint, this could go for $100 plus now. Then wrapping up this box, we have my copies of Fire Emblem Gaiden, which I never ended up playing because I soon after buying this, they came out with Echoes of Val Fire Emblem Echoes Valencia or whatever. And that was actually really hard and I had a hard time playing that. And then, of course, the original Fire Emblem, which is still fun. It doesn't have that rock, paper, scissors system that would come in later games, but I thought it was fun all the same. So there goes that box. Let's see what I put in this bigger box. I think I put some consoles in here. So what do we have? We have the Neo Geo CD controller. This is the, yeah, this is the sort of rounded edges. I believe it's compatible with the original Neo Geo. I think I probably like this one more just because it doesn't have any sharp corners. So it's not gonna hurt me when I put it in my lap when I'm trying to play. We've got the Neo Geo I think this is the Turbo Duo power adapter. You've got to be very careful to make sure. I think the Turbo Duo R and the regular Turbo Duo have, and I think even the Turbo Duo RX have different power supply. So be very careful. Also remember that this is only for 100 volts. So you will, you will need some kind of power converter, at least so that you don't burn this thing out. I think you can probably plug this in in America where I think it's, what do we have? 110, 120 volts? coming out of our walls, but you want to make sure you have a converter just to be safe. And then wrapping up the video and the unboxing, I have packed very carefully. Yes, it is my other Duo R. Yep, still in good shape. A little bit of yellowing on the cartridge slot, but I wonder if that's just because that's, but it's, yeah, I don't know. I don't know why that's happening. I've heard it's the fire retardant that's causing that in all of these old plastics, causing them to go from yellow, or from white to yellow, excuse me. And then last but not least, we've got my Neo Geo CDZ, which I'm very sad to have to bring back to America. But again, I have to really limit what I have in Japan just so that I don't go crazy and thinking about why I'm not playing all of the amazing games on the Neo Geo CD. So that is it. That is what, uh, among other things, you can fit into two, pat into two checked bags. When you are going from Japan, I think pretty much anywhere else abroad, I tend to fly A and A or United. Those are the the airlines that fly direct to near where my parents live, and they usually allow two checked bags of up to twenty three kilos each. That's about fifty pounds. And this is an example of what you can fit in it, although I'm not including some other things that are not video game related. So you can actually fit a lot more. And that's something to keep in mind is if, you're come, if you go to Japan and you're buying a lot of video games, you have to think about space. So just keep that in mind. If you have any questions about shipping things from Japan to the United States is the one is the place that I know most intimately. But I can also give you some tips on international shipping from Japan. So I'm going to cut it here gonna make maybe another couple unboxing videos from stuff that I shipped to myself. Hope, you look, hope you're looking forward to those. I've been your man in the United States, Jay Contra, saying thanks for watching, see you next time, and mahalo.